Hi, my name's Sophie Roberts. I'm a podiatrist um, and work in the UK and have a special interest in um, EDS and HSD. And today I'm just going to run through some case studies on children with um, EDS and um, just tell you a little bit about my clinical work. Um, so I've got three patients today and I thought um, I'd start with uh, this patient, Oscar. Um, so he came to see me age seven um, in March 17 and he is a uh, male Caucasian only child. Um, he was struggling with running and he felt he was always last. Um, he had fatigue, particularly at school. He had quite kind of busy school days. He was having OT at school for poor fine motor skills, had poor coordination, and his um, mother had noted this poor running gait, which he was sort of aware of. He had generalized MSK pain in feet, knees, and legs. Um, so he wasn't very um, particular about his um, exactly the locations, but it's sort of generalized pain. So on speaking to his uh, um, mother, it, he, the patient did not crawl, which is interesting. Um, he had walked at 16 months, which of course we could say is a little bit late. Um, and he was a little bit of a reluctant walker, but had overcome this. Um, so this was the gait analysis we did um, when we first, when I first met him. His physio had referred him, he was, he, she found um, low muscle tone, apart from calf muscles, which were very tight. Um, seven out of nine on basin score. And the biomechanical assessment had showed an ankle equinus associated with his tight calf muscles. He had a weak um, and, a, um, and, um, and his weak single heel raise. He had an unsteady single leg stand um, uh, with his eyes open. Um, and on examination, he had that really kind of mobile subtalar and mid tarsal joint. Um, that just kind of that kind of swings around as you as you um, uh, examine it. The gait analysis, as you can see, shows this sort of everted calcaneal um, position with an abducted foot position. Um, on walking, he had this sort of delayed heel lift. So it's almost um, the analogy gives it's almost like kind of walking in sand, um, and he had sort of poor hip control. Um, so very. Un, unclinical term, but he kind of sort of lolloped, lolloped along. Um, and um, and obviously with his running, you can see that kind of real lack of power, lack of ankle power um, in his running with, again, those features of the abducted foot position, really marked um, uh, medial longitudinal arch collapse, that real sort of navicular collapse um, as he's walking there. So um, the treatment we did um, podiatrically was some calf stretching um, and um, we got him in ASICS trainers for schools. We actually took him out of sort of school shoes and got him in some ASICS trainers. Um, we made some orthotics. So we used a sort of semi-rigid device because we really wanted to try and control um, that kind of or support that foot anatomy um, with a nice soft top cover um, and then to continue the physio to work on that strength and conditioning. Um, so in terms of his outcome, his pain was much better. Mum said he barely mentioned his pain. This was in September, so six months later. Um, he had actually really improved on his, um, he was a really good boy, he really did his exercises. Um, he had a good and non-painful single heel raise. And essentially things have really improved for him. He, he was basically doing everything he needed to be doing. It wasn't such a struggle in the school day. So what we can see here on the gate um, is that rear foot leg angle um, is really improved, still abducted, but some of that comes from that externally rated hip position. You can see there's much more power. His cadence had, has increased. Um, his um, hip control is better. Um, it, you could still describe him slightly as lolloping along, but you can see there's sort of more, more power in his gait um, and things that improve from, from a kind of um, function and pain point of view. Um, so then this was reviewing him at eight. Um, uh, this is in, in February 18. So he had continued with his calf stretching. Obviously, all this time, there's a sort of skeletal growth. Um, he was wearing the ASICS trainers at school. He had orthotics. His physio had got him doing kind of fun stuff like bunny hops, donkey kicks. Um, interestingly, around that time, he was diagnosed with the dyspraxia. Um, and interestingly as well, in terms of how his mother felt things were going, it felt he was improving um, so his pain had still improved, but she felt his, his function 
um, wasn't so good. And I think what happens is that the, the skeletal bones, they grow um, and then the muscles have to kind of catch up in, in strength and length. Um, and so um, sometimes we almost see a, back, a backward turn, maybe in the gait, um, as the calf muscle is not as strong, you're starting to go back to seeing that delayed heel lift, the lack of ankle power. So things will change. And obviously the thing we're possibly most in, in, interested in is this is pain and that fact he's still pain free. Um, and, um, you know, from looking reflection back from that initial video, still improvement. But it's interesting the fact that mother didn't always think he was on this kind of you know, straight line trajectory. Um, so then this was um, him uh, in December. Um, he was age eight still, so he continued with, with everything. Um, but it, actually what was interesting then, he, he told me that he'd done this 1600 um, meter race at school and he wasn't the slowest. And for him, that was a huge achievement. Um, I like to give them a bit of a challenge in their walkway. Sometimes with their gait analysis there, you can see the <laughs> mats on the floor. Um, and, and actually things had to then improve, his single length, his single heel had to then sort of improve. So, um, so I think, you know, just kind of waiting for the body to adapt around that skeletal growth is important. Um, so this is now him um, running um, at the 18. So um, I just put that video in from the original one, just to sort of compare. Um, and, you know, you can see his core control, his leg, Less messy gait, um, his sort of ankle power had really improved, and and you know he felt like he it was so lovely. He actually felt like he was a runner, um, which is is really nice because he definitely didn't feel like that when I first met him. Uh, so this is August twenty twenty when he's age ten. Um, interestingly, he came in with some perineal tendon flicking, um, uh, um, clicking over his um, lateral malleolus. Um, again, just something I put in my notes, but it's quite interesting. Um, he had good power generated by boots. He's doing lots of kind of shoulder bridges. He's been signed off by the OT and was actually now just having physio um, uh, once a month. Um, so this is him walking now. So you can still see that sort of abducted foot position. You can see rear foot angles are looking good. Hip control maybe could be improved, um, but certainly... Um, He's, um, you know, he was still continuing to be pain free um, and um, but still this sort of quite abducted position. So this was July 2021, age 11. Um, he deconditioned during lockdown. His fatigue had got worse. I think that second lockdown we had here had really kind of deconditioned him. He was actually at that point diagnosed with um, HEDS. Um, it's sort of still having physio and upped it uh, a bit, as you can see definitely a more abducted foot position as he's sort of um, I think he's sort of 11 and a half nearly 12 here um, a definitely more sort of um, less core control in his gait um, and then this is him February 2022 this year he'd had a large growth spurt um, he'd sort of refined his coping strategies for school he'd sort of he started to get he had more choice in what sports he was doing so he was kind of um, uh, he wasn't doing rugby he was doing um, kind of tennis and, and hockey um, and again I think as he's going towards that kind of um, sort of pubescent prepubescent stage that that kind of abduction in his, his um, rear foot is is quite marked um, so you know just a kind of interesting um, overview of um, how you know how his sort of function changes and how it's not always in in the kind of linear direction and as as bones grow um uh, muscles have to catch up and how foot position kind of changes um, in its um, ab and abduction angles. So um, moving on now to uh, patient two, who I saw in October 16, age seven. She had anterior knee pain for the last two years um, before she saw me. She was a toe walker since she'd started walking. She had very tight posterior musculature because of weight disposition. She was eight out of nine with, on the um, uh, Baton score, she tripped a lot, was really clumsy. Um, she'd been diagnosed with um, hypermobility sexual disorder. Um, so what we did with her was some orthotics with some heel rays to bring the ground up to the foot. So proprioceptively, she's trying, we can try and encourage that kind of heel to her gait. Um, she wore night splints during rest, not at night. She found them really uncomfortable to try and get a little bit more stretch through the Achilles tendon. Um, and she also 
saw a hypermobility specialist physio because she had found that all her previous physio had just been sort of too aggressive and she just needed actually some just sort of gentle strengthening. Um, so then this was her when we'd fitted the orthotics. Um, and as you can see, starting to see that heel lift starting to, um, uh, uh, starting, uh, sorry, the heel strike starting to happen. Um, she's not just toe walking, um, still very <laughs> clumsy and unsteady. Um, but her, her knee pain with the orthotics actually settled quite quickly. Um, so then this was her when I reviewed her age 12, so quite a few years later. Um, and um, just comparing from her initially um, to age 12, um, you can start to see, you know, she's actually barefoot getting quite a good heel strike. Um, she's definitely improved in her core control. She's not so clumsy. Um, she's not sort of tripping and falling so much. Um, but you can see that the sort of sort of heel toe walking has really kind of started to kick in. Um, so, um, as I said, this is her age 12. This is her in her orthotics now with her walking with her orthotics. And you can see that heel strike. Um, she does get some random lower limb pain still. Um, her mother had noticed that improvement in the gait. She still trips a bit, but it's definitely improved. And of course, we would still expect some calf tightness. Um, but, you know, I think things were definitely in the right direction for her. So that was over quite a long period of time that, um, that we saw her. Um, so patient number three, so she was complaining of, um, she came to see me at age seven, um, she was complaining of left, right great and left ankle pain, she was getting night pain, morning pain, so really quite symptomatic, she had crawled at 18 months, quite late, she was a bottom shuffler, she was clumsy and tripped, she easily bruised, so her mother was diagnosed with HEBS, so she had her diagnosed at age five, um, which is quite young, but you know, because she had had it and she wanted to kind of get help with and certainly there were lots of things that she was showing kind of clinically. She was doing sport just in school, but not out of school. Um, and the physio um, had worked with her and had made some really good um, gains with her. And she'd given her some over-the-counter orthotics, so just, which had been positive. And she wore her trainers to school, so she wasn't wearing school shoes because she found that more comfortable. Um, so this is her walking. Um, so, you know, that poor hip control, poor control. You can see that excessive femoral um, internal rotation. Um, you can see that sort of slight pronation and adduction um, in her gait, quite what I refer to quite clumsy gait, quite messy gait. Um, and certainly that ties in with the kind of symptoms that she is experiencing. Um, so um, ex uh, from the biomechanical assessment, excessive internal hip rotation, she had tight calf muscles, she was nine out of nine with baking scores, so hugely hypermobile, she had genuvalgum, knee hyperextension, inverted calcaneal, poor single leg stand, um, so definitely some, some reasons to, to treat, not just from the symptom point of view. Um, she has, um, um, so basically we discussed doing something custom made for her, so we did a semi-rigid copolymer functional orthotic, with three degrees of heel inversion to try and sort of invert the heel. First met cut out to try and, and a two to five met, um, metatarsal bar to try and reduce some of that in toeing. And then this sort of P-cell top cover, which is really nice proprioceptively. Um, and, you know, she responded so well to this. Um, and this is just the email which I put here. Um, so, dear Sophie, so sorry, sitting on some five clothes, made phenomenal progress with orthotics, the pain is already reduced significantly. Um, so much we've been able to stop physio for now um, to see how she does without it. So, you know, that, that shows how important the podiatry is um, as along with the physio and all our other little strategies that she has um, for management um, and how sort of altering foot mechanics with these kind of kinetic chain um, type presentations that we see um, can make a, a huge um, difference to that. So thank you very much listening.